Welcome to our channel, your go-to source for everything Sigma male. We explore the unique traits, psychology, and relationships of Sigma males, uncovering what sets them apart. If you're fascinated by this mindset and lifestyle, stick around. You won't want to miss what we have in store. In the complex web of social dynamics, much attention is often paid to the dominant alphas and their more submissive counterparts, the betas. These two archetypes are widely recognized and discussed, especially in the realms of leadership and group behavior. However, lurking in the shadows of these social structures is another type, the sigma. Unlike alphas who thrive on attention and betas who seek validation, sigmas operate independently, often unnoticed, yet wield a quiet power that can shift the balance of any situation. This blog post explores the story of one sigma who exemplified the concept of a silent game changer and became the worst enemy of those who underestimated him. Before we dive into the story, it's essential to understand what sets sigmas apart. The sigma male is a lone wolf, someone who doesn't conform to the typical hierarchy of social dominance. Sigmas are self-reliant, introspective, and often march to the beat of their own drum. They don't seek leadership positions like alphas, nor do they follow like betas. Instead, they choose to carve their own path, often operating outside traditional social structures. This unique position allows sigmas to observe and understand the dynamics around them without becoming entangled in them. Their independence is their strength, and it makes them unpredictable and often underestimated. In a world obsessed with visibility and dominance, sigmas are the quiet strategists who can change the course of events without ever stepping into the spotlight. Brooksville is a small, picturesque town where everyone knows everyone. It's a place where gossip spreads faster than wildfire, and secrets are few and far between. In this close-knit community lived Ethan Moore, a man who perfectly embodied the Sigma archetype. Ethan was the definition of unremarkable, or so it seemed. He lived in a modest home on the outskirts of town, worked as an IT consultant for the local government, and rarely drew attention to himself. He attended town meetings but never voiced strong opinions, participated in community events, but remained in the background and generally avoided the spotlight. To the townsfolk, Ethan was just another face in the crowd, a quiet man with no apparent ambition or influence, but Ethan's quiet demeanor belied a keen mind, always observing, always calculating. He was a sigma, content to let others bask in the limelight while he stayed in the shadows, meticulously planning his moves. Brooksville, like many small towns, had its share of power dynamics, and at the top of that hierarchy was Richard Graves. Richard was the town's alpha, wealthy, influential, and always in control. He owned several businesses, including the only grocery store, the largest real estate agency, and a popular bar. His wealth and connections allowed him to manipulate town policies to his advantage, often at the expense of the less fortunate residents. Richard was used to getting his way. He was charming when he needed to be, ruthless when he had to be, and always sure of his position at the top. To him, power was everything, and he thrived on the control he exerted over Brooksville. However, Richard's Achilles heel was his arrogance. He never considered the possibility that someone might be quietly plotting against him, someone like Ethan Moore. When Richard decided to push through a new policy that would allow him to buy up land at a fraction of its value, forcing many longtime residents to sell their homes and businesses, the town was in an uproar. Protests were organized, petitions were signed, but Richard, confident in his power, dismissed them all. He knew how to play the game of power. At least that's what he thought. Ethan had been watching Richard for years, quietly observing his rise to power and the way he manipulated the town to suit his needs. Ethan knew that a direct confrontation with Richard would be futile. Richard thrived on conflict and had the resources to crush any opposition. Instead, Ethan decided to use his Sigma strengths, observation, patience, and strategy. Ethan began his plan by subtly influencing public opinion. He started small leaving anonymous comments on local social media pages, gently steering conversations in a direction that made people question Richard's motives. He reached out to the few remaining independent business owners in town, offering them free IT services in exchange for their cooperation in a plan that only he fully understood. Next, Ethan began gathering information. Using his expertise in IT, he hacked into Richard's personal and business accounts, not to steal money but to collect data. He discovered that Richard's businesses weren't as financially stable as they appeared. Richard had been borrowing heavily to maintain his lifestyle, and one wrong move could send everything crashing down. But Ethan didn't act on this information right away. 
Instead, he waited, continuing to plant seeds of doubt in the community. He organized anonymous donations to fund legal challenges against Richard's land grab policy, hired a private investigator to dig into Richard's past, and even leaked some of the less savory findings to a local journalist who had a vendetta against Richard. All of this was done quietly behind the scenes. Richard noticed the growing resistance, but couldn't pinpoint its source. He dismissed the anonymous comments and small acts of defiance as the work of disgruntled residents. He had no idea that a single quiet man was orchestrating it all. As the months passed, the tide began to turn against Richard. The legal challenges slowed down his land acquisition. The negative press began to tarnish his reputation, and his financial situation grew increasingly precarious. But the final blow came from an unexpected source, Richard's own arrogance. Richard had always prided himself on his ability to read people, to know their weaknesses and use them to his advantage. But he had never paid much attention to Ethan. To Richard, Ethan was just another quiet, unremarkable man, someone who posed no threat. So when Ethan approached Richard one day with an offer to help him fix the sudden technical issues plaguing his businesses, Richard accepted. He didn't even consider the possibility that Ethan might have been the one causing those issues in the first place. Ethan's plan was simple but brilliant. He gained access to Richard's computer systems under the guise of fixing them, but instead he planted software that would slowly siphon off critical data, emails, financial records, and most importantly, the evidence of Richard's shady dealings. Ethan didn't stop there. He also left behind a digital footprint that pointed to one of Richard's competitors, ensuring that when the data leak was discovered, suspicion would fall on someone else. Richard, too focused on trying to regain control over his crumbling empire, didn't notice the subtle sabotage. By the time he realized what had happened, it was too late. The data leak became a major scandal, leading to investigations by both the media and law enforcement. Richard's empire collapsed almost overnight. His businesses went bankrupt, and his influence in Brooksville vanished. With Richard out of the picture, Brooksville began to heal. The land grab policy was repealed. Local businesses started to recover, and the town slowly returned to its peaceful ways. But the story of Richard's downfall became something of a legend in Brooksville, a cautionary tale about the dangers of underestimating people. As for Ethan, he remained as quiet and unassuming as ever. Most people still didn't know the full extent of his involvement in Richard's downfall, and those who did were either too grateful or too scared to say anything. Ethan had no desire for recognition or praise. He was content knowing that he had protected his town from a man who sought to exploit it. But the story doesn't end there. A few years later, Brooksville faced a new challenge. A large corporation had set its sights on the town, planning to build a massive shopping mall on the outskirts. The project promised jobs and economic growth, but it also threatened to destroy the town's character and displace many residents. Once again, the town was divided. Some welcomed the development, eager for the opportunities it promised. Others feared the changes it would bring and the potential loss of their homes and businesses. The town council was split, and the corporation, sensing an opportunity, began applying pressure to push the project through. Ethan watched all of this from the sidelines, just as he had done before. He saw the same patterns of manipulation and exploitation, and he knew that the town needed someone to protect it. But this time, things were different. The corporation was larger, more powerful, and far more sophisticated than Richard Graves had ever been. Ethan knew that he couldn't use the same tactics as before. He needed a new plan one that would leverage the power of the community rather than relying solely on his own skills. So he began quietly gathering allies, people who shared his concerns and who had their own skills to contribute. He reached out to environmental groups, historical preservation societies, and even a few sympathetic journalists from outside Brooksville. He coordinated a campaign to raise awareness about the potential environmental and cultural impact of the mall, organized protests, and helped local business owners form a coalition to present a unified front against the corporation. But Ethan didn't stop there. He also began working behind the scenes to undermine the corporation's plans. He discovered that the corporation's environmental impact assessments were flawed, and he leaked this information to the media. He found out that the corporation had violated zoning laws in other towns and made sure that these violations were brought to light. As the opposition grew, the corporation found itself facing mounting legal challenges negative publicity, and increasing resistance from the town. Just like Richard Graves, the corporation had underestimated the power of the quiet, determined Sigma working against them. In the end, the corporation decided that the project wasn't worth the trouble and pulled out of Brooksville. 
The town celebrated, and Ethan once again faded into the background, satisfied with the outcome. The story of Ethan Moore is a reminder that power doesn't always come from loud voices or aggressive tactics. Sometimes the most powerful person in the room is the one who listens, who observes and who waits for the right moment to act. Sigmas like Ethan are the silent game changers, the people who can alter the course of events without ever stepping into the spotlight. They are the ones who can be your greatest ally or your worst enemy, depending on how you treat them. In a world obsessed with dominance and control, it's easy to overlook the Sigmas, but as this story shows, doing so can be a grave mistake. Call to action. If you found this story intriguing, share it with your friends and colleagues. Reflect on the role Sigmas might play in your own life, and consider how understanding their quiet power could change the way you approach relationships and challenges. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments and explore more of our content on social dynamics and personal growth. This blog post is now structured and worded to fit the needs of a blog, with a more narrative style, clear sections, and a conclusion that ties the story back to broader social dynamics. It's designed to engage readers, provide insights, and encourage further interaction. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the Sigma male mindset, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content. Join our growing community and stay tuned for more insights into the Sigma way of life.